Hey students, welcome back. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use JavaScript to create a simple game where the computer chooses a secret number, a number that you don't know what it is, and you have to try and guess it. It's a very simple game. It's going to use control structures like the if statement. We'll also improve the game using a while loop so that uh, yeah, the game will just be a better game. And we'll also include different ways to verify or uh, validify the user input to make sure they're inputting the, the right kind of input for the game. Anyways, it'll all make more sense once, once we get going. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start out by creating a new folder for our program. Okay, whenever you create a new program in JavaScript, you always want to uh, create a dedicated or separate folder for that project. So I'm creating a folder called number guess and all the files for this project will be stored inside this folder. That's very important. Now we're back in brackets and what we need to do to set up our project is go file open folder and we want to go and select that folder we just created. Here's the folder. I select it, click on select folder and now I'm ready to go. You'll see there's nothing in that folder yet. We're going to create our HTML page, new file. Let's call it number, number guess game dot HTML. Since you have Emmet installed, uh, like I've shown you in another video, let's just go exclamation point tab and that'll give us our basic structure for this file. Let's change the document title to number guess game. Now in this particular um, HTML document, we're going to have to add a few things. First of all, an H1 uh, stating what this page is all about. Click the button to start the game. Okay, and so obviously below this we need to put in a button element. And that button element needs to have an on click event, which is going to be the function inside our JavaScript file that we are going to call when we click the button. So we'll call that, we're going to call that function guess capital N number, guess number. And um, we need to put some text on this button. We'll put play game here as the text on the button. Now, we've got our, this is all we need for our HTML file. I hit Control F, save, and it reformats everything because I have Beautify, that extension is installed, and it formats everything nicely. Now, this is an HTML file, but we write our JavaScript in a separate file, a JS file. So in order to use that, we need a script tag, and that script tag is going to have a source attribute that is going to uh, link us to the number guess game.js file. Now that doesn't exist yet. I haven't created it. Um, might have been better to create it first, but uh, either way it doesn't matter. Let's come over here, right click new file, and let's call this using the exact same name I just wrote into that script tag number guess game. Make sure you spell it exactly the same way or else it won't link properly. Okay. I now have number guess game .js. That's my JavaScript file. And now these two files are linked together. Okay, the next step is to go over to our JavaScript file. And we said that we were going to call a function in this file called guess number. So we need to create that function. And it's actually gonna be the only function in our entire file. All the code will go inside this function. Now, this is a guess the number game. So uh, we have to have a means by which the computer will choose a number within a certain range of numbers. And we want that number to be hidden from the user. We don't want the user to know what it is. So a random number generator is what we need. And JavaScript has a random math function that will do just that for us. And so what we're going to do is we are gonna create a variable called random num and we're going to give that a value we're going to use a we'll just go ahead and use a function to start with called math.random okay just like that and that's going to call 
uh, the random function. We're going to test this for just a second just to see what kind of output that gives us. But in order to see it, uh, once we uh, start running this program, we're going to need to um, output uh, to the console for debugging purposes. Now I'm putting in a comment here. I'll just say for debugging. All right. Um, and this is a really common way to debug your program. If you want to see what's going on behind the scenes, you can simply output uh, a value, like, in this, like the value contained in this variable, and output it to the console. And then you'll be able to see what it is. So um, let's go ahead back to our HTML file now. And again, save that one more time for good measure and hit the preview button in the upper right corner of brackets. And it's going to open up a your preferred browser. And here's our, our file. Now, if I were to click this button again, that button calls my guess number function. I don't see anything happening. Well, remember, what's happening is behind, happening behind the scenes. I'm creating a variable, getting a random number, and outputting it to the console. So I must press the F12 button and open up my, um, my console here so I can see what's going on in the background. Let's make this a little wider. And actually, I can see that something did happen. I just, I just didn't know it. Back here in the console, I can see that a, a number, a random number, was created and displayed. Uh, it says on line five of my file. If I click play ga game again, this button, I keep clicking on the button. Every time I do, I'm going to get another random number. That's perfect. That's exactly what I want. But one thing we notice about these random numbers, they are all decimal numbers and they're all less than one. And um, this would be a really hard number to guess <laughs> if you had to try to play this game. So this is not very suitable for our purposes. So we have to go back in and change the way we're creating a random number. Now, what we're seeing here is random. That function creates a decimal number between zero and less than one, okay? So you need to understand what random does. It creates a random decimal number between zero and less than one. So the highest this would ever be, the highest number would be 0.999999, and the lowest it would ever be would be 0, 0.000. And um, so we need to turn this into a whole number instead of a decimal number, and we need to give it a range. Uh, we're going to give it a range between 0 and 50, and I'm going to show you how to do that. All right, back into our numberguess.js file. Uh, instead of just using math.random here, uh, we're going to actually surround this with another function, uh, math.floor, and put a parenthesis there. This is a floor is a function, so it has a set of parentheses, but those parentheses need to surround our math.random. Now, what math.floor does is it takes a decimal number and lowers it down to the closest whole number, okay? But it goes down, it, it's not it's not rounding the number, it's actually stripping away the decimal point, leaving you with the whole number. If I save this now and go back and hit my play game, what I'm going to see is over and over and over again, you can see it's doing it multiple times by this number here, I'm just getting the number zero. Because again, a decimal number less than zero, uh, if it takes away the decimal point uh, portion of the number, I'm going to be left with zero every time. So that's not exactly what we want either. But this is giving us a whole number, which is good. But what we need to do now is take our math.random and we need to multiply that by one, uh, by a number that is one greater than the upper limit uh, that we want. So if we want a number from zero to 50, we're gonna want to multiply by 51. All right, let's see if this works. I'm saving it, going over, and um, again, this should be refreshing automatically. I don't need to refresh it. So now, uh, there you go. I am now getting, every time I click the play button, it's calling a function. That function's creating a random number and um, it is giving me a random number between 0 and 50. And there you can see I got 50 in this occasion. Here, this number 2 next to the 30, that just means I got the number 30 twice in a row. Um, and if I kept doing this for a while, I should probably eventually get a 0, which you see I did there. Uh, it'll never be lower than 0, it'll never be greater than 50. And that's exactly how you get a random number, a whole number, between certain range of numbers, from 0 up to a certain number. All right, we've got that. Now, what we're going to do next, now that our computer has chosen a number, our user has to choose a number. We're going to create a variable called guess. And this is going to be where we're going to store the user's uh, guess. And so this is called declaring, declare a variable, okay? Uh, using the keyword var and giving it a name. 
Then in order to give that guess a number, we need to prompt the user to enter a number between zero and 50. That would be their guess. So we're gonna say guess gets, which is the single equal sign. It's the assignment operator. Uh, prompt, and then our prompt is going to be in quotation marks, uh, the instructions. So please enter a number between uh, what we want, zero and 50. Okay, And that's the prompt that we have for our user. And that will uh, then open up a dialog box. They type in the number, and as soon as they do, it'll be stored in the variable guess. Now, this one might be another situation where we could test to make sure that our variable guess has the value that we think it uh, has. Um, we could do something like this. Your guess is, and then we could enter in this variable guess and make sure that the number that they've stored in the variable guess is actually what we think it is. Again, we're just logging it to the console. This is a way of debugging our program to make sure it's working as we expect. So let's go back now to uh, our browser here and click the, the number um, or the button, play game. And it's a little hard to see here. Actually, I'm gonna cancel this for a second. I'm gonna move this over so it's not underneath uh, that dialog window. And um, then I click the button. All right, and the random number chosen by the computer is 19. Um, and so if I uh, type in another number, say 25, and hit OK, it's going to say your guess is 25. So that's great. We're, we're outputting both the the random number, the random number that's generated, and the guess that the person is guessing is being stored properly. All right, we can go ahead and do away with this uh, line of code here. The best way to do it is maybe just comment it out, put two double slashes at the beginning of that line. We don't really need that one. Uh, it was just for testing purposes. Now, the purpose of this game, or the way this game is supposed to work, is um, the person enters a guess, which we, we've done, and now we need to give them some feedback. We basically need to say your guess is uh, too low, your guess is too high, or your or your guess is right on the number. You guess the number correctly. And in order to do that, we need to use a control structure called an if statement, which we've learned about. We're going to enter that here. We know our if statement always begins with the word if, and then the parentheses, and we need to put in the parentheses our condition uh, that we're testing whether this condition is true or false. Well, we have a number stored in guess, and we want to ask if that guess is too low, too high, or just right. And if it's too low, we would ask the question, if guess is less than, right? If less than our random num, which we created up above. And if that's the case, if our guess is less than the random number, what we would wanna do is use our window.alert, which we learned about previously, and uh, which is our output to a dialog box, and simply tell them your guess is too low. Now, that would be our first uh, if statement. If I click the button, and I see over here now, this is helping me because I know that the number is, and if I put in the number three, three is less than four, and I do that, it should say your guess is too low. However, if I click the button, and it put, uh, the number is 43, so if I put in 44, which is above that, um, I'm not gonna get any message output in the alert window because there is no uh, if statement handling uh, if the guess is greater than my secret number. So I need to create if clauses uh, for each possible outcome when I compare these two numbers. So we know that we can add extra conditions to our if statement. We can say else if, and then another condition, else if our guess is greater than our random number. That would, could be a second condition. And if that's the case, then our window.alert would be your guess is too high. And then we know that the third option would be that if the guess is equal to the random number. So we could simply say else if, another condition would be if guess is equal to. Now, we don't use a single equal sign because a single equal sign is the assignment operator, which we used up on line eight, where we assigned the, a value to our variable guess. Assignment operator assigns value to a variable. 
uh, but a double equal sign checks for equality, which is something different. So here we're asking if the guess is equal to our random num. And if that's true, then we would want our output, again, using window.alert, we want our output to be, you guessed it, you win. Something like that. Those could be the three possible outputs of this game at this point. So let's save it and go over. And again, hit the play button. Our number is four. If I guess three, uh, it's gonna say too low. Now, every time I hit the play, play button, uh, again, I'm getting a new random number. So I'm not guessing uh, up against the same number each time. It's a different number. So now if I put in 30, I know it should say uh, that uh, my guess is too high, which it was. And again, if I uh, enter 48 this time, because I know my random number there is 48, if I guess 48, it should say, you guessed it, you win. Perfect. However, what if uh, the person didn't quite understand how to input the number and they actually instead uh, typed in a number like this. They typed in a, a number using uh, letters instead of actually typing in a numeral, like they typed in 30. Uh, well, obviously, the computer doesn't understand those letters as a real number. And so it didn't, it didn't meet any of the conditions. It wasn't less than, greater than, or equal to my secret number. So what do I do in a case like that? Well, I can come back and I can add what's called an else clause. An else clause doesn't have a condition. Uh, it just is um, basically stating that if none of the other previous conditions are true, then do the following. So what we'll do here is just say window.alert, and in here we'll just put the word error. Going back over here now and refreshing this, I'm going to, again, the number is three, so what if I put in the number four like that, typing it in, and it would say, sorry, error, okay? Because I've not put in the right kind of, of input in that case. So there you go, there's your basic game. I've introduced random numbers and how to log things to the console, and also how to use a basic if statement with two else if clauses and a final else clause to test the, uh, test the input of our user against a random number. Now, this is an okay game, it works pretty good. However, it could be improved. And I'm gonna suggest you consider how you might improve this game. First of all, if we could use a while loop or some kind of looping structure so that the game keeps repeating over and over again, giving the person multiple opportunities to guess the random number because as it is right now, it's a little difficult to guess the number when you're only given one guess. So you might wanna consider how you could improve this game a little bit, and I appreciate you watching, and uh, stay tuned for my next video.